Centuries ago, Vikings landed on the Faroe Islands, a few hundred miles southeast of Iceland. They began a way of life dependent on the sea. They ate what the ocean provided, including whales. Their descendants, the Faroese, still do. Olivor Schurberg learned to hunt whales when he was a boy. It's a part of our diet, of our food. It is also a big part of our social life here in the Faroes. And it is a part of our old tradition and culture from former days. The Faroese hunt pilot whales, which appear off the islands in large pods. It's summertime now, the height of whaling season, and Olivor is eager for the whales to come. But nobody had seen any yet. And this is the bubble. This is a thin slice of this here piece here. And this is a thin slice of this here veil. It tastes really good. It tastes uh, of that uh, this meat uh, is coming from the sea. It tastes a little bit of, of fat. But for us who are grown up with this taste, it is a, a good taste. I tried the whale steak he cooked for his grandchildren. It tasted like liver. For some Faroese, whale is almost a third of their protein. But Olivor says it's more than food. We are proud that we are living here in Faroes, and we are proud that we still can continue as we have lived with our culture for centuries now. There are fewer than 50,000 Faroese scattered across 18 islands. Even the young become deeply involved in the whaling culture. In the town of Goethe, I met a young singer named Ivor. She told me what happens when the whales are found. There's not one person at home. Everyone goes down. Even children run out to the ocean to catch them. And uh, it's a very, you know, it's a very passionate thing and a very strong thing. And, uh, yeah, to be in a whale hunt is, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing. One afternoon, I saw it for myself. When whales are spotted offshore, the call goes out and a dozen or so boats set out to herd them into a bay. Men wait on shore for the boats to chase the whales onto the beach. They use a rope and blunt hook to drag the whales closer to shore and kill them by cutting the main artery to the brain. They say it's a fast and precise method with only one cut. But it is, of course, bloody. The entire hunt is over in about 20 minutes. When pictures of the hunt first appeared in the media in the 1980s, the outside world was horrified. I have just seen on television your murderous killing of the whales. I and all my workmates agree that you're just I am a grown man and I cry to see your inhuman acts. I would love to stick one of those hooks in your head and hear you scream the way the whales did. Signed, a normally quiet, non-violent Englishman. Kate Sanderson works for the Faroese government. It's her job to respond to anti-whaling protests. It started with quite a bang in the beginning, in the mid-80s, and, and the Faroes had never experienced anything like this. When uh, these campaigns were all in their heyday, we were receiving thousands of these kinds of postcards a week. And the feeling was that the Faroes were, were under attack, that it was us against them. The Faroese say they've been hunting the whale for nearly a thousand years. They have written records dating back to medieval times. But in the outside world, attitudes have changed. 
Obviously, I think people also are very aware of the effect it can have on, uh, on, a, on foreigners who haven't seen this kind of thing before. There's a very high awareness of its dramatic nature and, and people understand that people from other places can react very strongly when they see it, um, if it's not properly explained to them what's going on. 132 pilot whales were killed in the hunt this day. The Faroese say they stop hunting when they've caught as much as they can eat, about 1,000 whales in a year. For some people outside the Faroes, whales are seen as a special kind of wildlife, one that should be protected unconditionally. But the Faroese say the pilot whales are not endangered, that they're a resource and that any animal slaughter is bloody. Many people are angry about the Faroe Islands killing the whales and all that, but um, but to me, I mean, it's important for the the culture of the Faroe Islands and the people here. They don't they don't kill the whales for fun or anything because it's it's it has saved many people here um, when the times have have, have been difficult and people have been eating the whales. By nightfall, hundreds of people from the surrounding villages have arrived at the docks. The sheriff is about to announce how much whale each family will get. Olivor is here with neighbors from his village. This is the whale they will share. Each man will take home about 100 pounds of meat and blubber tonight. Anna Rubikson has been eating whale since she was a small girl. When Anna became pregnant with her daughter Rachnild, she received a letter from a local doctor. He wanted her to participate in a new study. Scientists had discovered that pilot whales are contaminated with methylmercury. Paul Vai, a Faroese doctor, worried that his people had been harmed. We knew from old times that the uh, Mercury is a toxic substance. There's no doubt about that. It was well known that mercury in high doses could cause severe brain damage. There's not enough mercury in whale meat for that. But what happens at smaller doses over a long period of time? Vae, with his colleague Philippe Grandjean from the Harvard School of Public Health, began a study. He asked every pregnant woman in the Faroes to provide hair and blood samples and to enroll her child in a long-term study of his or her development. That was 20 years ago. I had hoped, of course, that uh, we would find uh, nothing. Today, Vai has tested nearly 2,000 Faroese children. He found that chronic low-level mercury exposure affects a baby's brain, causing small but permanent deficits in development. A shortened attention span, delays in language ability, a decrease in motor speed. He even found small changes in how the brain regulates the heart. We did not expect in the pharaohs, in the low exposure area, to see any uh, signs of mercury poisoning, like cerebral palsy, for example. What we were going after was um, if there were subtle effects on the neurodevelopment of the mental ability, language, reaction time, things like that. 
The study established a benchmark for the low end of mercury toxicity, one of the first to identify the amount which begins to affect a developing child. Although some scientists dispute Dr. Valle's research, its impact has been global. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency used Valle's results to issue guidelines on what mercury levels in fish are safe to eat, especially for pregnant women. The doctor was born here on the island of Vaur. His father was the town harbor master. He says he understands the importance of whales to the Faroese better than any outsider could. The whaling tradition has been so central in Faroese culture. The critical voices I have heard, they are not more than I expected. He recommended that women cut back on whale meat and give up blubber altogether. It was a message many people didn't want to hear. Yeah, uh, there were many thoughts running through my head when I heard it the first time. Should I believe it or should I not believe it? Should I forget it and what, what to do? We are putting ourselves in a position where we, we, we may end up seeing a traditional food, a local food, stigmatized. And do we want to create a situation where that food is then rejected completely? The pilot whale has a long lifespan and ranges far from the pharaohs. It's a carnivore, and with the fish it eats, it accumulates many pollutants, including PCBs, as well as methylmercury. For now, plenty of Faroese families continue to eat whale meat. But some younger mothers, like Ingeborg Berg, aren't willing to take the risk. When I was pregnant, I didn't eat it at all. And when I was breast giving, I didn't eat it at all. And I'm very concerned about my girls eating too much of it. Her daughter, Ranva, is part of a new generation that does not eat grind or whale meat on a daily basis. In the long run, it could, it could mean that if, if the young women do not eat grind, and usually the women decide what, what to eat uh, for dinner, uh, the children do not eat uh, grind. When they grew up, they, will not, they are not used to grind. I think we could, for some generation, we could see that the various people do not, maybe not at all, eat grind. We have identified a, a toxic effect on our children. We have been forced to change some dear dietary habits, which has been a, uh, an important part of our, of our Faroese identity. The Faroese identity has been bound up in their isolation, but now even this pristine environment seems vulnerable to pollutants from far away. Today I must say uh, I believe much of the things Paul Valle has done in his research. Paul Valle tells us and tell the world that the veils are polluted, but where are all this pollution coming from? The only thing we can do is first to live with it as it is and try to tell countries on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean that there is something wrong in the system. New knowledge has come here, born out of their old and controversial tradition and in the death of the whales, a warning to the world.